Okay, so one of the things we need to talk about early on is the law of polarity. And you conspiracy buffs need to listen up and take notes. Because this is one of the main ways that those in the know are able to control those who are not in the know. Through the law of polarity. It's one of the seven hermetic principles. And all magic is done through the seven hermetic principles. Yakin and Boaz. Most of you have probably seen these before. And what do they mean? Well, you ask Jordan Maxwell and he'll tell you they represent the male phallus. <laughs> yeah, I watched the whole video of him. It's 10 minutes long showing pictures of all these temples and explaining how all the pillars represent the male phallus. You ask others and they might say, well, it represents duality, uh, opposing forces of light and darkness. Well, that's a little closer. But what they really represent is the law of polarity. Now here are the pillars on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Those of you familiar with it will know them by the names of the Pillar of Mercy and the Pillar of Severity. Now we're not going to get too in-depth with the Tree of Life at this point other than to explain the Law of Polarity, but just know that it's the blueprint for the nature of reality. And you can see that polarity is built right into it. Except for the crown, at the top, the pillars support the rest of the tree of life. See, you can't escape duality. It's built right into the very fabric of reality. Up, down, left, right, black, white, in, out, yes, no, male, female, positive, negative, on, off. And you're like, yeah, okay, I get that. Well, these seemingly opposite things are not separate at all. These things are one and the same. Just with the opposite polarity. To quote from the Kabbalion, everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. All truths are but half-truths, true seekers. See, we're taught to seek one absolute truth. There's one absolute truth. See, now you know why in Star Wars, and I hate to quote from that, but there's so many underlying truths in that saga, which is why... It resonated with people to the point where it became uh, a permanent fixture in pop culture. This is why when Ben Kenobi tells Luke Skywalker, well, you're going to find, Luke, that many of the truths that we cling to rely solely on our own point of view. You know, I always thought that was a cop-out when I was younger. But that's the point of polarity. See, what's good for one person may be bad for another person. People are polarized. And you see this most evident in politics. Either on the left or the right. In religion, those Satanists are just as extreme as the fundamental Christians that they think they're rebelling against. They're one and the same. They're just opposite polarity. So how are people controlled through the law of polarity? by those in the know. Well, you remember the whole Chick-fil-A fiasco where the founder made a comment about the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman, which then kicked off a whole shitstorm with the gay community who boycotted Chick-fil-A, causing another reaction to those supporting the statement to rush to there and buy a record number of chicken fillets. See, there was no controversy until he caused controversy. Who started the controversy? Chick-fil-A. Who profited from the controversy? Chick-fil-A. See, they just got to 
say something and people rah, react because they're polarized. And that's another thing from Star Wars. The Emperor plays both sides. The Dark Magician plays both sides. It doesn't matter what side you're on because both are controlled and played off against each other. See, this is why the media only focuses on issues that they create, issues that divide and polarize the people. They never focus on anything that unifies anybody. No, it's all division and polarization. Right now, it's gun control. See? And on those things, they never shut up about them. Those who are polarized are easily manipulated and controlled. All that's required is to introduce either an opposing force or a like force to move them by repulsion or attraction. And one of the first things you learn in ritual magic is to do the middle pillar ritual. Well, that ritual is designed to balance those forces, to depolarize you so that you're in the middle, so that you just don't automatically react to things. Now, this is why I told you two videos ago during the introduction that you don't have to agree or disagree with the things that I'm saying as most of you will be apt to feel the need to do so, because you're polarized. That's polarization right there. The magician, on the other hand, is depolarized, which makes it far more difficult to control and manipulate him, and makes it easier for him to manipulate that which is polarized. I hope this is making sense to you. And it's not that polarization is a bad thing, See, that line of thought is polarized in of itself. It's in fact a natural thing. Without it, life couldn't exist. You take away the pillar of mercy or the pillar of severity off the tree of life, and what do you have? The whole thing collapses. Think of the pillars as terminals on a battery, a positive and negative. What happens to the flow of electricity if you remove one of those terminals? Well, everything stops. See, this is why you need that equal and opposite force. Because without it, there can be no movement. And considering the human body is bioelectrical and electromagnetic in nature, you can start to begin to understand how this comes into play. So it's not a bad thing, but it is a principle that is overexploited by those in the know in today's society. You truthers and Alex Jones followers and conspiracy buffs are extremely polarized. For as awake as you think you are, you are very easily controlled. And you're probably sitting there fighting a reaction of what I just said due to that polarization. See, anything that's us versus them is following that law of polarity polarization it is the framework on the tree of life as well as the main principal tool in the magician's arsenal see the pillars represent not only duality but the battery terminals for that great electric flow for life and you need those terminals to complete the circuit and hopefully you keep the line grounded this is why in the middle pillar ritual, when you visualize the Sephiroth of Malkuth, you visualize the sphere partly above your feet and partly in the ground. That's to ground you and to depolarize you. See, grounding is supposed to happen naturally, but you're all running around in rubber sole shoes all the time. And you're not making that connection with Earth. And then wondering why everybody overreacts to the slightest things like they done lost their minds. I know it's winter here right now, but if you're able to go outside and take off your shoes, stand there, in about 10-15 minutes you'll feel that energy start to come up one leg, up the body, and then down the other, and out through the ground. And that's a natural grounding. But I needed to establish how this law of polarity works, because this framework of the tree of life this great electrical circuit is going to become the basis of your magic. And we'll expand upon that in the next lesson. See you then.